I'm Ed Bennett, and I'm the research specialist in the Art and Technology Department. And uh, we're going to look at the context and the uh, uh, tools that we use to develop the Artbus project and explain like why it's here and what it does. Artbus really started out as a protocol, and it started out as a way to wire things together so that everything always wires together the same way with the same pinout and the same connection. And uh, and then is controlled, addressed the same way. And Rob has shown the, uh, the Maxim SP um, uh, implementation of, of Artbus protocol uh, through the transmogrifier. Processing, which a lot of people use as glue to fit things together, as a controller, as an end in itself, um, uh, it's, it's getting more popular all the time. It can do more stuff all the time. It's, processing is really great. Um, the, it's the opposite of Max. It's very easy to make uh, serial stuff work in processing. So um, this is uh, a sketch, a processing sketch, that is just an art bus demo. And the... Uh, interesting points here, if, if you've worked with uh, processing, this is probably familiar. This is where it opens the serial port to talk to the art bus, and you get an object called port, and you talk to that. Um, and then down here is where you write the art bus commands. So the art bus commands always look the same. Uh, I don't know whether Rob showed you this, but bang means you're going to address a board. The capital letter is the... Is the uh, address of the board, the little a command means read the analog, and the one means that you want to look at channel one, and commands end with a semicolon. So when you say, hello, board A, read an analog line, number one, please, and then you go to get the result, then it appears in the variable A. Likewise with channel two, hello, board A, please read the analog line number two, and then you get that in the variable B. So what we're doing with that is we're using three pots, and the three pots are controlling um, uh, a modified, a hacked demo that comes with processing in the OpenGL. It's also, every time it goes through the loop, it's also counting. So the, the count is just to show that it's doing input and output at the same time. So when I turn this, it changes the size of the, of the spinning cube, and then you, you have the left and the right roll. So as I, as I turn this, the, the thing zooms in and out, which is really just changing the size of the thing. And then this pot changes the rotation along one axis, and that this pot changes the rotation along the other axis. So, um, zoom in all the way and you get a big blob of, big blob of color. So, um, it's, it's a little eye candy thing, but what it does is it makes the point that uh, once you get the data into the program, you can do anything that you want to with it. And I know there's good sound libraries for processing. So, um, uh, and, and again, the thing to, to notice looking at the max patch is that the bang, the bang AA2 is the same in max as it is uh, in processing. So whatever you do to write in, in max is the same that you do in processing. It looks exactly the same. Uh, likewise, in flash, I don't have a flash demo, but uh, likewise in flash, it would look exactly the same. Um, there are little differences in the background, and uh, if there are differences, then we have a transmogrifier that makes, that makes them work together transparently. Uh, the command sets are really simple. Uh, it's things like uh, little a is read analog line, um, uh, toggle an output line. If it's high, make it low. If it's low, make it high is the letter I on the digital board. The uh, commands are on the website, and they are also in the setup tool that we use to uh, uh, give the thing its personality. Every, or its, its address, its name. So 
uh, like I'm, the analog board here is board number A. And it's board number A because I burned that into its memory uh, with a little program we have for setting that. So I can make, I can give it any address I want. It's still going to be an analog board, but I can give it a name. And that way I can have a bunch of analog boards and I can talk to them all whenever I want to. So if I want 24, if I want 24 analog input lines, then I would use uh, three boards and I would probably give them the names A, B, and C. So uh, that's how the protocol works. It's really, really, really simple. Uh, a board has a, a name, which is a, a capital letter, and then it has little commands, and uh, the commands are specific to the type of board, and then it can take parameters, and some boards will return something, like uh, the value that you can use in your program, and some boards, uh, or some functions won't return a value. For instance, uh, here, we are writing to board C the value of a little counter that just spins, I called it loopy counter, it just spins as the draw loop runs and processing as it spins around. Um, the value of loopy counter is incremented. As it's incremented, it's written out. Bang C means hello board C. L means I'm going to write a byte. The byte is loopy counter, and then we always say please. We always say please. And so this is, uh, that gives this effect as the thing spins through its, uh, spins through its cycle. 